So what are the steps in test development? Well, first, you plan the test. So what are the domains that you want to address? In our case, we looked at semantics, morphosyntax, phonology, and pragmatics. And then what we did is um, we wrote items for each area, um, for each of these domains, and we wrote probably three or four times the number of items that we would eventually want. So a clinical test is one that is pretty efficient. You want to be able to give a test and have each subtest only take maybe 20 minutes, right? Um, you don't want to do a three or four hour test. But to start, you have to start out with a three or four hour test to figure out which items are your best items um, for this um, population. And so that's basically what we did, and each um, person is going to talk about how we did that for each domain in particular. Um, then you administer all these items to a small sample, usually 50 kids. Um, if you're developing something like the GRE, you would um, administer that to several hundred. Um, we're not doing the GRE, so 50 or so kids was a good, um, were, were good sample sizes to start with. And then you conduct item analysis, and through that item analysis, you start throwing out the items that don't work. Then we take this shorter revised test and we administer it to yet another sample, a bigger sample. Okay, and then we continue to do this doing item analysis and cross-validation as we start to step um, through all these, all these steps and reduce the number of items that we have in each of the different domains. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about item difficulty. So item difficulty is the proportion of a population that got an item correct, and those are p-values. And p-values go from 0 to 1. Um, if they're close to zero, that means nobody got that item right, so it's way too hard. So that doesn't tell you anything, so you get rid of it. If everybody got that item right, then it's way too easy, and you might include one or two so you don't um, totally bum out the kids, but you, you don't want too many really easy items because that's not going to tell you anything either. Okay? And then the items that you select depends, of course, on the purpose of your test. So we use these same principles but applied it and looked at item difficulty um, for our groups of kids at different levels of exposure to two languages as well as for kids with and without the impairments that we were trying to identify. The next thing you do is you look at item discrimination and item discrimination is the comparison of the um, percentage of typical kids who got the item right and the percentage of children with impairments who got that item right. Okay, and we subtract and looked at, look at the differences between those two. And there we're going to get a difference of, again, zero to one. Um, and the greater the difference, the more sensitive that item is to the impairment that you're trying to identify. And so if you can build your test based on those items, items that are sensitive to that impairment, but not sensitive, that don't have big um, discrimination values, that um, are sensitive to level of exposure, for example, or for age of first language exposure, then you have, I think you have a better chance of developing a measure that is going to help you to make distinctions between your clinical and non-clinical group.